One of my <coughs> early mentors was the late Pearson MacDonald. And Pearson was a great public speaker, fantastic, and a great storyteller. And one story leaps out because he told the same ones over and over again and you knew what was coming and it was still interesting. It was the story of Diamond Jim Brady. Diamond Jim Brady was a tramp, a bum on the streets in the Great Depression. There was no jobs. And they used to sit round the fire or stand round the fire to keep warm, stand round the street, the fire on the street to keep warm. And he always made a point of getting a New York Times every day, finding one from somewhere. These guys were literally starving. And one day he saw an ad in the New York Times and it was for the sales sales manager or salesman for the Pullman car company. So if you don't know what a Pullman car is, it's the equivalent of having a private jet today. It's the equivalent of having a Learjet. It's private transportation, Pullman railway carriage. So he said to all these other, and I, I use the word bum slightly because I, you know, tramps, whatever, you pull what you want, uh, I'm going to get that job. And they ridiculed him. All these other homeless people just ridiculed him. He said, no, I'm going to get that job. And when I get it, I'm going to sort us all out. And they ridiculed him more. He said, but I need your help. I can't show up for a job like that, dressed like this. So basically, he loaned a suit and he loaned a shirt and a tie and some shoes and smartened himself up. And he was a big guy. Smartened himself up. And one thing he found that he'd loaned was a diamond tie stud, diamond tie pin. So he walked the miles through New York City and showed up at the office of the Pullman Car Company. Walked in, head high, shoulders back, threw the newspaper down, the New York Times down on the reception's desk and says, you can take the ad out of the newspaper now. I've decided to accept the job. She says, oh, really? Okay. Um, I'll tell the, the, the chairman. I'll tell the chairman. Um, who should I say is here? And he looked her straight in the eyes. Said, Diamond Jim Brady. So she goes into the chairman and said, you know, Diamond Jim Brady's here. Diamond Jim Brady's here. He's going to take the job. Really? Diamond Jim Brady's here right now? Oh, okay. Send him in. So Diamond Jim Brady walks in, throws the newspaper down in front of the chairman, and the job back then was for about 100,000 a year, which is probably, you know, 10 million a year in today's money. It was a big job. It was the biggest, biggest job in the world, I guess, at the time. Throws the newspaper down, said, I've decided to take it. Oh, okay. Uh, thanks very much, Mr. Brady. Um, start on Monday, 9 o'clock. So Monday comes, 9 o'clock, Jim Brady has managed to borrow the suit and everything again. He walks to the office, he gets a different reception. Receptionist looks at him. Oh, it's you. The chairman wants to see you. So he figures he's been rumbled, but he plays the game anyway. Walks in to see the chairman. The chairman doesn't even invite him to, see, to sit down. And he says, uh, you know, I've been doing some checking about you, Diamond Jim Brady. No one has ever heard of you. No one knows who you are. And you've got some nerve coming in to see me, the chairman of the Pullman Car Company, and telling me, take the ad out. I've decided to take the job. Just get out of here. Don't waste my time. So as he's turned around to defuse the situation and walk out, Diamond Jim Brady says one thing. Said, Can I just ask you a quick question? Yep, yeah, sure, sure. Ask and get out. He said, I sold you cold on giving me the top job in the country. In a second, you agreed to it. What makes you think I can't sell a few Pullman carriages? And he just shut up. And the chairman went to the window looked down the avenue was thinking away and thinking away for five seconds 30 seconds two minutes five minutes 
seven and a half minutes later, he turned around to Jim Brady and said, you know, you might just have a point there. We'll take you on, but on commission basis. That next year, Jim Brady made double what he would have made on salary. And the rest is history, as they say. He's in the Guinness record books for all kinds of stuff. But there's two messages there. One, first person to talk loses. So how I generally operate now in business is if someone wants to see something and wants me to show them something, I send it to them and let them think deep. Let them feel it out. But if it's not for them, there's no point in me getting in business with them. But the other thing there is the physiology changes. By Diamond Jim Brady changing his clothing, putting the diamond on, automatically our physiology changes. Our shoulders go further back, we go straight up, we're not slouched anymore. But you can do that without changing the clothes, you can just decide to do it. And guess what's going to happen? When you change your physiology, you change the vibration you send out, you change what you attract, and you change the results just by changing your body language. So, you can start it right now. Or you can go fucking slump about the rest of the day. It makes no difference to me one way or another. From uh, a schoolyard somewhere here. Have a wonderful day.